We're used to an economy in which everybody does one thing with one company for eight to ten hours a day, five days a week. We're coming to a really important time where resources are limited, population are rising rapidly. And if we don't do something about it, you know, our communities are going to break down. So we're facing a triple crisis of environment, economy, and social division. We can't continue with the economy that we have now. That is a bus riding off the edge of a cliff. As it turns out Americans made more than three and a half billion dollars last year using some of the things in their everyday lives. People are making money on all the things around their home, going unused so much of the time. It's called the sharing economy, and tonight we're showing you the real money that you can make just by renting out what you already have. When we look at the main drivers behind this kind of activity, the first, technology. New, innovative technologies that allow us to connect with more people and find more things to share. Secondly, a, a shift more broadly towards values that embrace openness, humanness, connectedness. Third, economic realities, which the 2008 global crisis brought home. And finally, environmental pressures, so population growth, limited natural resources, um, and a growing awareness of the effects of climate change. Sharing you know, does two things. It radically reduces resource consumption and it can increase access uh, to resources at the same time, right? So this is why it's share or die for us. We're in a kind of share or die moment. I'm Peg and I'm an Airbnb host and I have been an Airbnb host for almost three years. I was laid off April 30th of 2009. Another regular job isn't necessarily a, a good objective. So the idea of sharing um, definitely uh, help a lot. It helps pay the mortgage. I don't think of them as strangers. I think of them as friends I haven't met yet. Nice meeting you. <laughs> okay. It takes commitment and it, you know, if I commit to a guest coming, I can't say, oh, it's not going to work today, you know. I'm committed and it's lots of connecting, that's for sure. So I am not a professional chef. I don't claim to be at all. Mm -hmm. I don't charge what a professional chef charges. I just charge enough to cover the cost of ingredients. I was taught well. My mom is an amazing cook. Growing up around her and just kind of, you know, following her trail around the kitchen gave me the confidence that you need. I'm just someone who really loves to cook and to share something I've created. You never know who you're going to meet who's going to come through your door. It's, it's fun. I enjoy it. And until I stop enjoying it, I'm going to keep doing it. People are sharing with strangers now. They're sharing their home. They're sharing their car. They're giving strangers rides. They're having strangers over for dinner. People are sharing money. You can actually start to ask people to invest in what you're doing. I just remember being like, yeah, we're gonna do a Kickstarter, and yeah, everybody's gonna love it, and we're gonna raise the money, and it, it kind of worked out that way. <laughs> Thanks for watching our video. We're Alchemy Collective, and I'm Payam. This is James, Chris, and Rob. We will be the first worker-owned specialty cafe in California, and maybe anywhere. Just having that feeling that your ideas are important is really powerful because you can watch people and how they interact with customers and how the customers interact with them. There's so much more mutual respect. So we can't take the same corporate forms we've always used and just plug the sharing economy into those. We need to create new types of corporations or uh, adapt old types of corporations. Corporatize everything. <laughs> It's about a revolution in the way that people share goods and services and the way they connect with people in their cities. I think we're really craving that. I think our generation is craving to be connected to other people. The sharing economy is a true uh, movement and I think it's a big economic and social trend. Seen those crazy cars that are out and about with the fuzzy pink mustaches driving around town? It's a new rideshare company and it's called Lyft. You guys are in the world famous hip hop Lyft tonight. I host a hip-hop trivia game in my car with my passengers, and my passengers actually compete for prizes from me. I'm a father full-time, and basically, I'm just trying to get my stuff popping. Who knows what's going to come out of this, man? I'm hoping that great things come, man.
Now it's time to take a walk. My first single in like years. This is exciting right here. See, my song is called Fist Bump. You know what I'm saying? It's all about lift and hip hop lift. Diddy in my city, it's all right. I got my lift app and my smartphone with me. Open it up, request a ride. Driving two minutes away, and I ain't gotta stand on the street. L Y F T, Fist Bump, if you wanna ride with me. I bet you wanna ride with me now. Why? I bet you wanna ride with me now. Tell why and you wanna ride with me. Let's go, man. We love you so. Hip hop lift, baby. Hip hop lift, baby. This isn't actually a sharing economy. You're not sharing anything. You're exchanging money for a ride. We wouldn't mind the competition if we were all playing by the same rules, but they're taking our business that we rely on and they're just going out and skimming off the cream and taking what we need to survive. A, a new type of service that doesn't have to follow our rules, that's driving around, in fact, without proper and adequate insurance, that's leaving the public uh, unprotected and at risk because they don't have adequate and proper insurance. Right now, we're in the midst of an intense uh, housing uh, set of challenges. We don't have enough affordable housing for everyone who wants to live here. And the idea that you could simply take off the marketplace rental units or homes that could otherwise be used to permanently house San Francisco families doesn't sit well with many of us. And so we're crafting legislation to really address that situation. It's just a different, fills a different need for people. It's about community more than the food, I think. And if the restaurant industry is really threatened by that, then they're gonna need to get more creative and find ways to incorporate that community aspect into their business, you know? Any new area that the shareable economy has entered is disrupting what has been an old way of doing things. Sort of 21st century disruptive technologies that are challenging 20th centuries of how, uh, how people interact with each other. Law is what we make it. It is this continuous conversation within society and people who push the law, who change technologies, are changing law by changing what society values, prioritizes, and thinks about. By 2020, it's estimated that 40% of the entire workforce population of the United States will be technically freelance. It's this, it's this great risk shift, right, where businesses have reordered themselves so that they do not have to bear any risk. When we look at subcontractors, temp workers, independent contractors across the board, how are we going to protect these people who we call non-workers? It's very fluid, which I think is not um, something that people really experience before as an option for income. They can make it financially possible for themselves um, to be free from the requirements of a rigid job. We're kind of at a moment similar to like what happened in the Industrial Revolution when factories started to become a uh, big employer, like there wasn't work protections and the institutions uh, to support them haven't really emerged yet, but are emerging. That shift doesn't mean that these companies are only about creating community. At the end of the day, you can't run a business unless you are making money. It's important that people really believe what they're saying when they say sharing economy, not this is a nice buzzword for me to get a huge valuation and shovel a bunch of money in my pocket. Sustainability and altruism runs around fifth on the list of things on why they're in this space. In the end, people want to use this because it's fast and cheap. You know, the 90s was about getting people online. And, and the 2000s was about connecting people online with things like Facebook um, and social networks. And I think the next decade of, of companies will be about connecting people offline. As connected as we are today, a lot of people still feel disconnected. It's like that person with 5,000 friends on Facebook but still eating alone. And we want to leverage the power of the internet and technology to be able to bridge that online offline divide. This isn't just technology driven change or increases in efficiency. I mean it's a confluence of a bunch of different factors. We've got the technology, we've got the economic drivers, we've got the sociological drivers. And so to me this is here to stay and this is going to be huge. I don't think we are even close to living up to our full potential. I think we are seeing the smallest sliver of the iceberg of what we could do. And that's what makes me so excited. We are so early into this, 
and we're doing a decent job with like what we know today. We ha you have not seen anything yet. The economy isn't something out there abstract. It's our creation, and if we created it, we can recreate it. I don't know if I would say the sharing economy can save the world, but I can say that we can save the world, and I think the sharing will be an enormous part of it. In the end, it's not going to be a peer economy or a sharing economy or a collaborative economy. It's just going to be called an economy.